Let's think about a situation, an everyday situation. You wake up in the morning and it's 9 a.m. You look back at the clock and now, shit, it's 9 a.m. and you're late for your office. You jump out of your bed, you go to the washroom, you hold your toothbrush and just brush as fast as you can. And then you jump into the bathroom, you take a shower. I know for some of the people it might be optional. <laughs> but you go in the washroom and then you take shower and then you get out. You take your shirt on and just button it as if you have been caught by your girlfriend's dad, red-handed. You take on your shirt and then you sit in the car, you hold the steering wheel determinedly and then you put the other hand on the gear lever and for that moment, you are better than Michael Schumacher. At least you think so. And then you rush towards your office. But let's just wait for a second and think about one single component. Let's just remove one single component out of it. That's our hand. This hand. Without our hands, we can't hold the toothbrush, we can't wash our face in the morning, we can't take a bath. Neither can we button our shirts and driving, let that be alone. This hand has what has made us what we are right now. This has separated us from other animals. This has made the human civilization what it is right now. And this hand is what enables us to make the society what we have around us. But unfortunately, at this point of time, there are more than one billion people who have some part of their body missing or they have some kind of disability out of which a lot of people have a below elbow amputation and disability just not impacts your uh, your work or your your survivability but it also affects you emotionally according to statistics they are 90 percent more prone to get a divorce if they have some sort of disability. These are some of the very general things which we are talking about. But we cannot get the gravity of the situation till the time we actually don't meet a person, experience the life of a person who has some sort of disability. I got a chance to meet a person like that. And then I got to know how difficult it is to actually live a life without a part of their body. Personally, I'm a guest lecturer to different IITs. So while giving lectures, I met this guy. Uh, and this person is a school student. And he lost his arm because of an accident. And now he's still a school student in his uh, class 11th or 12th. And he has a lot of difficulty. The way he talks to people, the way he interacts with the world has completely changed. He has turned into an introvert person. He doesn't talk to anyone. He feels unfit for the society. He prefers not to go out and play with other children. The life has become very difficult for him. What if a person loses a part of his body? What are the possible solutions to that? So we explored one of the solutions, which is an artificial limb, which you can see right here. Now, it is very difficult to understand which one is the artificial limb and which one is the real limb. But the problem is that this is just a cosmetic hand. It cannot do anything. It just stays there so that you'd look normal. But still, you would not be able to do anything with this hand. But we are living in the 21st century. It's 2016. Now we are entering 2017. And we have a lot of technological changes that are happening. So obviously, there should be something better than this as well. So obviously, there are some robotic hands that are available, which are like this. But, and they can actually do almost all the things which a human hand can do. But they have two severe problems. One is that it is very, very expensive. It will cost you your kidney and even more. And second, when you wear an arm like this, you tend to look something of this sort, which is not a good thing. So we said to ourselves that we are the makers of one of the best technologies. We are the makers of the coolest robots here in India and all across the world, we have made Manav, which is India's first completely made in India robot. And it is one of the most cheapest robots that you can actually find in the category. We are also the makers of the world's first brain-controlled wheelchair. So this is a wheelchair for the paralyzed people, for people who have a full body paralysis. They cannot move around. They cannot do anything. It is for those people that 
has, uh, who have actually lost control of their life. And now, just by thinking, they can move around. The wheelchair would be controlled just and just by thinking. So why don't we go ahead and make something for people who are affected with this kind of a problem? So we went ahead and we searched for solutions. We searched for how we can go ahead and make a prosthetic limb, a robotic limb, for people who are actually suffering with this kind of a problem. There were a lot of challenges that we faced in our way. One of the challenges is how do we control our hand? Because when we want to pick a glass of water, we don't think about it. We just go ahead and pick the glass of water. There's no command that has been given. You just think about it and it happens. You want to drive a car, you automatically hold the steering wheel or the gear lever. You go ahead and just do it. The same way, the robotic arm also needs to be controlled. But how? So we found a solution in something called EMG. This is called electromyography. Now this has been around for many decades now. And this sensor, basically what it does, it's very simple, yet very complex. Your brain is made up of neurons, and those neurons, they fire up electrical signals. And these electrical signals are actually carried through our nervous system to our muscles, where our muscle actually contracts or expands, depending on the situation. Now, this electrical signals, which our brain is sending to our arm or the muscle, is being detected by the sensor, which is called an EMG sensor. So far, so good. But the problem is, a single EMG sensor can cost up to 15 to 25,000 rupees. And when you have different types of finger motions, when you have different types of things that your arm can do, there are different types of uh, sensors that you would require. And that makes the cost of the prosthetic hand a big, big issue. And because we are staying up here in India, uh, at this point of time, if you go ahead and try to find a robotic limb, it very much costs somewhere around 35 lakh rupees to 60 lakh rupees. That's almost impossible for anyone to own, except for a select few. So we went ahead and we said, we want to design something from scratch, because obviously improvising on the existing EMG sensor was not something that we could do. So we went ahead and we designed our own sensor. And from a cost point of 15 to 25,000 rupees, we designed this sensor here in India, in our lab, and that only and only cost 15 rupees, and that's it. <laughs> and mind you, this is one of the cheapest sensors that has ever been made, and has been made completely in India, and we do have a patent for it as well. Now, moving on from this EMG sensors, there are different things that we wanted to address in this, um, in this prosthetic hand. Is, first is the cost, that we wanted to make this prosthetic hand way more cheaper and affordable for every single person. But we didn't want to actually get down on the quality or workability of this prosthetic hand. So we went ahead and we thought of different solutions, uh, different techniques through which we can actually go ahead and make this hand. We found our solution in 3D printing technology. We have been using this technology to make Manav and other robots in our facility, but because of 3D printing, we were able to achieve some of the completely unimaginable strength to weight ratio. At this point of time, because of 3D printing, we have been able to achieve structures which are way more stronger than any metal and certainly better than carbon fiber as well. And that's a big achievement. And because of that, we have been able to make structures which are way more lighter, way more stronger. The second part of it is that because every person is different, so his arm should be different according to his body structure, his age, his gender, his uh, body color, his skin color. It should be exactly like him. And we can do so in 3D printing. So if there's a five-year-old guy, we can make a small hand for that person. If there's a fat person, if there's a white person, if there's a colored person or a black person, we can make a hand for them as well. And trust me, it would be looking exactly like their very own hand. With this technology and with these improvements, we have been able to actually get down the cost. And mind it, it's 200 times, not 200%. We have been able to reduce the cost 
200 times than any other prosthetic limb. At this point of time, a normal prosthetic limb will cost you anywhere approximately around 35 lakh rupees to 60 lakh rupees. This one, on the other hand, can you guess what the cost would be? Only and only 15,000 rupees, and that's it. <laughs> Not only that, this is the world's lightest prosthetic hand as well. Why is this a question? Why are we always and always talking about lightweight structures? Think about holding a bottle with your hand, a one-liter bottle in your hand, and think about holding it throughout the day. It becomes difficult as the time passes by. The same thing happens with the prosthetic limbs as well. When you wear it, it's completely comfortable, but after an hour, after two hours, after three hours, it becomes difficult for you to actually have that hand and work with that hand throughout the day. So as compared to other prosthetic hands, which are approximately 600 to 800 grams in weight, this one, on the other hand, would be approximately 280 to 340 grams, depending on the model which you want to choose. Moving on, there's also the world's strongest prosthetic arm, which is available in the market as well. How? Because, because of 3D printing and the advanced technique of simulation and testing, we have been able to make structures which was impossible to make by conventional injection molding techniques. So this is the prosthetic hand that you can see over here. So you can see that there is a car going right above it. And there's this prosthetic hand, this is how it looks like. It's a white color one, and it is perfectly fine. A car has passed this prosthetic hand, and nothing has happened. The movement is perfectly fine, and there's no breakage whatsoever. We fitted technologies and batteries and efficient motors, because of which, as compared to other prosthetic hands, which work for 8 to 12 hours a day, this can go anywhere up to 7 days on one single hour of charge, which is the full battery. Not only that, we believe that it should be as fast as you, it should be as good as you. So that's why on a single charge of just five minutes, you can work it up throughout the day, which is eight hours, and you can go ahead and do your stuff without any problem. There's also the world's first biodegradable arm. We believe that at any point of time, this prosthetic arm, because of its cheap nature and uh, its, its um, overall working structure, ease of use, it would be selling like anything. And that's why we, we understood that when a man dies, his body decomposes. And so sh should happen with this prosthetic arm as well. So we made it out of materials which are completely biodegradable. So whenever you keep it away from the sun uh, for around 5 to 10 years, it will completely decompose, and you won't find a single part of it. So it has zero impact on the nature. So it doesn't matter how many arms we sell, we are not hurting any part of nature whatsoever. <laughs> Finally, this arm is completely made in India. Finally, I would like you to leave with a small video of this prosthetic hand and how it has changed life of one person and is yet to change life of millions. Thank you so much for being here. Our family was very good in the way. My mother wanted अपनी खुशियां बच्चे पर नछावर करती है वो साइंटिस्ट बनना चाहता है कि मैं साइंटिस्ट बनूं कुछ ये ऐसा ही ट्रांसफार्मर था और उसमें पतंग लटकी हुई थी जो कि बच्चे ने धागे को खींचा और रेलिंग में चिपक गया मेरे साथ ये एक एक्सीडेंट हुआ था सन 2011 में जो मेरे को करंट लगा था जिसकी वजह से मेरे एक हाथ पूरा काटना पड़ गया ये घटना होने के बाद अवध के बारे में तो मैंने सोचा कि सारी लाइफ खत्म 
जो आम लोग कर सकते हैं वो अब मैं नहीं कर सकता सर्च किया तो एक कंपनी है जो कि उसने कहा हाथ तो आ जाएगा लेकिन पैंतीस लाख का होगा और एक दिन मिस्टर दिवाकर जी से बात हुई तो इन्होंने चलता हुआ हाथ इन्होंने कहा कि हम बना करके देंगे और कम पैसों में बना करके देंगे वाले जो कर रहे हैं अच्छे काम कर रहे हैं अब जो पहले काम कर सकता था अब वो मैं कर सकता हूँ जो भी मैं सोचता हूँ वो करता है जैसे कब खुलना है कब बंद होना है जैसे नॉर्मल हाथ है